the team, right? Or is that a different, or is that different? Is the forensics and digital forensics different, or are they in the same bureau in the same department? I'm not sure where Kruger works and if that falls under him or not. I'm just wondering. The evidence falls under him. He, he does work evidence. in the forensics, and I'm wondering, does the digital forensic unit, no. is that part of the... No. So what part of the police unit would that be then? falls under, once this project is completed, it'll fall under Tammy's group. But is the digital forensics right now being handled by Mark Kruger's department? Digital forensics? No. His group, I think, oversees the computer software program that stores photographic evidence and, and video evidence from other places. But we're not going to make this about individuals. Tonight's discussion is about policies and, and the structure of the police bureau. So if you have concerns about... So the digital forensics is not part of the forensics? I don't know what you're talking about when you say digital forensics. So maybe digital forensics is what is on the back of uh, the officers that are filming protests. It says digital forensics on their thing. So I would assume that's part of the forensics department. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that Mark Kruger also is um, part of the uh, protest monitoring through uh, all that. Okay, well, again, I don't think it's appropriate to, to have this discussion turn into something about individual employees of the city of Portland or the police bureau. But yes, the forensic evidence division criminalists do are responsible for capturing video evidence at crime scenes and at other places where we currently capture video evidence right now. Um, and that program, that work is something totally different than what body-worn cameras will be. So you're basically telling me that Mark Kruger does oversee the uh, forensics, which includes the digital forensic department. Thanks for answering the question. Um, sure, if that's the message that you get from that, then well, that's what you said. You said right. part okay. of the So we went back and forth in there, but he did, he did answer your question, and the question was answered there as well. <laughs> we have 10 minutes left. Is there other questions um, related to this issue? Yep, in the back there. Um, it seems like there's, um, you know, this this conflict between, you know, should body cameras, for instance, be always on all the time, and that provides accountability um, and transparency? But then, of course, there's that conflicts with concerns about privacy and recognition. <clears throat> um, I'm wondering whether one solution that could be explored, if it hasn't already been, um, would be to link <coughs> automatic, autonomous activation of the body cams to um, say any time an officer uh, you know reaches for or pulls out their gun or their taser or what have you there are triggers uh, that some cameras uh, uh, utilize and one of them is the uh, when the weapons drawn from the holster uh, and actually uh, the mayor asked us to look into that one and it's written to the RFP but I also ask what other triggers so does it trigger when you activate your lights and sirens or you open your vehicle door or various other triggers and that's part of the uh, the questions that we've uh, put into the RFP for the vendors to answer okay. thank you you We'll go up to the front to Philip. Um, I just had a thought, kind of while uh, we were having this discussion. There was mention of the person who is going to be reviewing these films. Of uh, you had mentioned, uh, you know, some kind of routine schedule. Someone who is responsible for reviewing these once a week, once every two weeks. But I'm curious if that person does review. Um, the footage and find any red flags or, or something amiss in the video footage, um, what would the steps then be? Um, how would they follow appropriate procedures um, for um, raising issues about red flags seen in videos? Okay. Um, 
not all the videos will be reviewed. They will only be reviewed uh, most likely by the officer if it's written into the policy that way or by the public records release people uh, that will be reviewing it prior to, uh, to do the redaction prior to release. If something is found that is concerning, uh, it is the responsibility of that individual that's reviewing it to raise it up through their leadership that they saw something that needs to be uh, uh, reviewed. Okay, thank you. Great, we're gonna go over here, and we've got Steve, and then we got back to Dan. <laughs> Hi, it's Pat again. Hi, Tammy. Um, I know you've uh, got this question already, and, and I'd just like to hear and what your answer was. Um, and that's related to maybe it's Office of Equity or whatever. That uh, well, the officer is going to have a body camera um, and is allowed to film an altercation. What about citizens who are either involved or observing? Um, do they also have the right um, to film? Yeah, this came up in one of my previous meetings, and I didn't know the answer, but uh, one of the captains uh, answered it. Uh, citizens have the right to film as well, as long as they are not interfering with uh, the officer's actions. Or unless they're the one being arrested, because the police will tell you to not film them to cover up their own uh, acts with you itself. I've had Officer Singh do that to me when I was homeless and he was harassing me. I tried to film it and he acted like he was going to um, attack me and told me that I couldn't film, so, uh, so, just to follow up with that. You're not even allowed to film your own arrest when you're being uh, harassed by the police. I think it would be really great if uh, the city could, because I have been in a position where I have filmed police doing things in the past, um, both paid and unpaid. Uh, it would be really great if there was a defined definition about what it is that, you know, how far you have to be away or what, you know, because, you know, most often when you're talking to a police officer and he says, hey, you have to back up, he wants you to back up out of uh, audio range. And, you know, there's an implication when you have a camera that there is audio also involved. And it, w it would be great if the police had, and I recognize that, Tammy, that you don't have the answer to this, but it would be great if there was some sort of... Well, I, I have a, an answer from my personal experience as a military police officer, not as a, a civilian police officer, but you want people a certain distance away because there's reaction time, and while you're focusing on this, People coming in from other uh, areas causes concern for personal safety. Um, I don't think there is an actual defined, you must be 15 feet away or whatever. Um, and I don't think there will ever be because there is, there just, that just leaves too much uh, for the ability. There's so much you can do in certain amounts of spaces. I, yeah, I totally agree with you. That's I, why I think it's just as long as you're not this, interfering. Because we as, as PSAP went to your police academy for the weekend mm -hmm. and we learned that it was 20 feet. Never have I been told to move back 20 feet. I've always been told to move back, you know, just, you know, 15 feet or 10 feet or whatever they felt was necessary. And I think that you're, you're speaking to a different thing than what I'm talking about. You okay. know, recognizing that your average person is not going to stab a police officer with their camera we need to we need to recognize that there needs to be some sort of rule and i recognize you don't have that answer thank you mm -hmm. so our cue list is steve dan and then robert <coughs> just as a, as a refresher when you guys start the pilot pro, uh, process uh, are you dividing that between different precincts, certain officers, certain shifts? How does that, what does that look like? Uh, the pilot is scheduled for Central Precinct and the Traffic Division. Uh, and the reason behind that is the inf IT infrastructure is already in place for Central Precinct. We have to do some tests out at North and East uh, because that's a lot of video uploading. <coughs> and tie up the city's internet and things like that or completely crash the system. Uh, Central's pretty much hardwired for it already. Um, 
So we're going to be doing it there, and we, we chose traffic division to test the durability because those officers are mainly on motorcycles and they're out in all weather. Okay. And it's about 212 cameras total. <laughs> so central is um, just selecting certain officers during certain shifts. How, what does that look like? All, all street officers. <clears throat> uh, we're going to go back to Dan, Robert, and we might have room for one. Uh, Sharon, Recording we'll, started. Sharon will wrap up our final question. Hi, Dan Handelman again. Uh, so just uh, to follow up a little bit on the people videotaping the police, there is a state law about that, um, and it's reflected in bureau policy as well. Uh, and that's one of our big concerns, is that the cameras on the police officer are facing out. So you're not seeing what the police officer is doing, you're seeing what the people are doing. So it seems, Donna, some, what some of our colleagues around the country say, is that these are mostly not really going to be used for police accountability, they're mostly be used to prosecute people for what perceived cr criminal activity, and we're really concerned about that. But my question is, are these going to be left on during roll call so we'll know whether the officer says, let's go out and shoot some black people, or if you see a black person, shoot them. So I think this exact raising of that kind of thing is important for the public to know. No, they most likely will not be left on during roll call because there's a lot of intel that's passed during roll call. Robert? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a cop watcher, and I ran into the same thing. Um, I believe the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled 10 feet. I'm a, I'm a cop watcher. I filmed the police. I believe the Supreme Court ruled that there's a 10 feet, like they did, they did that on a traffic stop. That was a ruling. But, yeah, I've had officers tell me to back up block two blocks away and threaten to arrest me if I didn't do it. <coughs> Um, the latest was the homicide on 125th. They wanted us to walk all the way down the Stark, which would give it, which would make it where there's no way for us to video. And then shortly after they did that, they cut the uh, crime scene Stark, so there'd be no way to videotape what was going on up, what was going on up there. We wound up actually staying in the apartment complex and videotaping um, from one of the balconies. But yeah. The, Police will, and I've received word from several people that has complained to me that officers have made threats, like I'll shove that camera up your A and stuff like that. So yeah, there's um, there's issues with uh, the police being filmed by people in the public. And anytime I hear something like that, I always try to get information so I can find out what officers say and what. So that's what I wanted to bring up to you. Okay. <clears throat> Final question is going to go to um, Ms. Sharon. My um, question is in response to where you were just saying, with the practice, if it's implemented, you name central and traffic divisions as those, if I heard you right, mm -hmm. most ready, most <coughs> technologically capable, and I'm contrasting that to the places and spaces where we hear the most about police stops, um, the disproportionate stops, the representation over representation, which would be like north, northeast. Should this be implemented, what is some kind of thinking around how soon it would be in the places where so much of this energy around community engagement with police is actually um, in response to the settlement. Once we have the decision uh, to move forward, according to my timeline, which probably won't stay the same, is uh, March through October of next year, taking them uh, precinct by precinct, um, one month at a time, divisions, because we have other, besides just the three precincts, we have other divisions, uh, but knocking them out uh, an entire precinct or division one month at a time and then a week downtime to reset, but then before we do all that, uh, while we're going through the, pro uh, the pilot, we will be testing connectivity at the other facilities. So if there is work needs to be done, we can get that work done and then we can uh, plan our, our uh, implementation schedule based on which, which area is most ready. So once we get to full implementation, central and traffic will probably go first because they already had it, we know they're, they're capable. We'll get them implemented and then we will start branching out to the other areas 
uh, as they become infrastructure, IT infrastructure ready. <clears throat> but it's scheduled for, I think, seven months total to, to once we get uh, everything rolling. Great, that concludes our, our um, body camera session. I think we should first just give Tammy a round of applause for answering all these questions. A lot. I also want to strongly recommend that PSEP um, form some kind of small one-time committee and assemble all of these recommendations um, and maybe review the footage of the last hour and make a recommendations from what the, the, um, the community and what we said into a document that could be presented as recommendations based on our thoughts. I also have a note taker in the room that okay. has been, like at all of my meetings has been documenting and we'll post them as well. Perfect. Um, 